Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back to SEO Aviation and to this video on how to actually do a very good and elegant A to B flight on the Boeing 777-200. So for that, you're going to go to either Massive Multiplier or Free Flight. You can choose any of those. I'm going to choose Free Flight. Uh, you go to your 777. Let's choose British Airways. I'm going to get full fuel just to make sure. And what you're going to do here, this is the most important page. So we're going to be flying today from Kilo Juliet Foxtrot Kilo, which is New York, to Echo Golf Lima Lima, which is London Heathrow, a very standard flight. So for that, what you want to do is set here your start position. So at John F. Kennedy, we're going to start here at the International Terminal, I'm going to have 4, gate 28. And what you want to do is to start setting your waypoints manually from this page, not from the FMC because the airplane doesn't have a manipulable FMC. So from Simbrief, which is a flight planning website, you get your flight plan and you start inputting your waypoints. I recommend to make the first waypoint one that is at the extended center line of the runway because you want to go straight ahead to it. So if we were to take off via, for example, runway uh, one tree right, we will choose this one, for example, it's called t -wo. Yes. So let's add that one. You can see it's messed up here, so you're gonna take it and move it before EGLO. Let me grab it. Okay, it's not moving, so let's take, let's delete it again, sorry. KJFK, and then goes this, t -wall. Oh, come on. KJFK. Yep. Uh, start position is here. And then this. So we have the waypoint coming out of the runway. And then you just put your waypoint. So in this case, I'm going to go direct to Helen right here and then I'm not gonna do anything important not any specific route you do if you're doing a, a serious flight in this case it's just a tutorial and then we're gonna go direct to to this waypoint here so that we can join the ILS for the runway and that's it that's everything you gotta do get the weather here we're not gonna use real world time set alt working and fly so what you have just done is to set up your lateral FMC, your LNAV, without actually touching the CDU, which is your control display unit. This, this way is not as good as setting up the actual FMC because you cannot set a standard instrument departure procedure or a standard instrument uh, arrival procedure uh, a star or a sit so it does not work that well but it's really helpful in 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 making the aircraft go to a specific point you want because if you fly on heading select you know that the the magnetic headings around the world change so you're not flying in a straight line but making some strange curves by this you're sure you're gonna fly straight ahead to the airport you want to go to so with this, you can perfectly do a 24-hour flight. Well, that's too long for the 777. A 18-hour flight, you can do it perfectly with this just by setting your, way, your waypoints. So what's the key thing here? Um, there's not much to do here in this aircraft. So let me just do it real quick. You want to go here. And by the time we take off, you're going to select LNAV. That's everything you're gonna do. You cannot select VNAV, obviously you see. But that's what we're gonna do when we take off. And one very, very, very important thing, if you go down here, this button has to be an FMC. NAV1, NAV2, FMC, has to be an FMC. That's key. So you can see now this LNAV is in green. If it was on NAV1, it gets in yellow. So it has to be this set to FMC. 
gonna set flaps five for departure. Landing lights are off. Beacons on, navigation lights are on, logo off, wing off, taxis off, and strobes are off. So go ahead and do a pushback here real quick. So as you can see here, we have the airplane to its intended path. That's all there is to it. Check your trim because by the time you engage the autopilot, if you do indicate the trim is gonna change. So make sure it is on the departure in the takeoff zone. Let's take it to zero. And the next thing is to set your runway heading. So you can take it from sorry, some charts, Navigraph charts, for example, which is a very good website for charts or, or from any chart that you find on the web. In this case, I don't know the runway heading for around for the runway we are going to be departing from. So I'm just going to select the heading. I think it is, which is one one three four. If I'm not mistaken, but we will change that by the time we align. And you want to set here your V two speed. What's the V two speed? It's a speed after rotation, which ensures a positive climb of the aircraft. That's what V2 is. So you, you for that can get a calculator of the takeoff speeds of the 777. There are some online, some are not good, some are. It's quite difficult to find one, but you can get a reference. Will be about 190 knots for this very, very, very heavy 777. Okay, we are aligned perfectly here so we're gonna stop pushback right here so brakes and at this point now we that we are ready to taxi we're gonna select our taxi lights wait for the push car to go meanwhile let's get a bit of trust speed brakes armed in case we have to re-eject our takeoff a bit more power Bush guard's gone, breaks off. There you go. So at this point, I'm gonna taxi to the departure runway. So if you want, you can just go ahead and skip this video up to the point in which I am lined up with the runway because I'm not gonna do anything while taxiing except from taxiing. Always remember, taxi with the rudder pedals. In this case, is the rudder thumb, let's call it. So you move it with your thumb if you are right-handed. Uh, with your right thumb, if you're left-handed, also with your right thumb. Keep in mind that the maximum taxi speed is 30 knots and the maximum speed for turns is 10 knots. So what I'm doing right now, it's not good. Taxiing and turning at eight, at 18 knots is not good at all. But as I don't want to bore you in the video, I'm taxiing faster. All right, but remember, Maximum taxi speed in a straight line is 30 knots. In turns is 10 knots. Uh, and if you are backtracking a runway, that is when the runway is too short. And there are in the taxiways in, I mean, throughout the runway, you have to do a 300, correction, 180 turns, sorry, and taxi back still in the runway. That's a backtrack. So in a backtrack, you can taxi faster about 45 knots is the maximum so that you don't spend too much time on the taxiway but that's it 45 for a backtrack 30 for straight taxi and 10 knots for a turn now it's not that serious I mean if you have a turn that it's not 90 degrees but a little bit like this one right here if you can see it's not like straight 
in a straight angle uh, you can taxi a bit faster I mean, you don't have you don't need to necessarily slow to those 10 knots but it's a very good habit to keep in mind as you for example have a very heavy aircraft and you don't want to damage the landing gear so that's key 10 30 45 and of course for the high exit taxiways high speed exit taxiways which are exits from the runway that are at an angle so that's not a 90 degree vacate position you also don't have to be at 10 knots to vacate you can be faster some pilots even exit at 45 knots and there's no problem as long as you feel comfortable with it so the airport's not too 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 full of people close to you that's important so you can see here because of my taxi speed it's more difficult to control the airplane you can see that the landing gear becomes less effective taxing here like I'm doing at 44 knots is something you should never and let me say it again never do all right it's just not to bore you here so there's the runway let me take power out and strobe lights are gonna come on once you are inside our runway or inside a runway area so once you are clear to line up the runway or take off as soon as you are inside the runway area you're gonna turn the strobe lights on and they will and they will keep turned on until you exit the runway at your destination airport so how you should actually taxi is like this below 30 knots and on a turn like this one which is a 90 degree turn to the left keep it below 10 knots and slowly make the turn to the left that's how you should do it keeping in mind that the aircraft is a long aircraft like I'm doing right now add a little bit more of power to enter the runway and now that we have entered our runway area turn on strobe lights and if you receive your landing clearance you turn on landing lights so we're right here let's suppose we're cleared for takeoff so again below 10 knots let's take power out make our left turn here to line up the runway and this is important I'm gonna stop so runway headings 134 I was right your initial altitude or the cruising altitude let's say 36,000 for today you can get all of these specific altitudes from Simbrief and something key here is keep in mind that we're gonna be using this flight level change button just wait for the takeoff so landing lights are on speed brake arm in case of ejected takeoff flaps 5 full power Takeoff trust is set. 80 knots. We're going to rotate at about 170 knots. 100, 110, 120. Accelerating. V1, rotate. positive rate gear up and listen carefully touch L nav and flight level change and keep set here an airspeed 
an air uh, an airspeed that you have that you want to keep. We want to keep two three zero knots at LNAV. So what is happening, guys? LNAV right here is controlling the lateral profile of the aircraft. We are gonna follow the flight plan that we did, and this fetch or fletch is stands for flight level change. What it is going to do is that it's gonna make you climb at the speed that you select, in this case it's 230 knots, at the maximum possible vertical speed without looking, without, sorry, without slowing. So it's gonna make you climb as fast as you can without losing airspeed. That's a very, very, very important feature. So let's go flap zero and accelerate to 280 knots, for example. and also reduce the thrust a bit so you can see the airplane is now sacrificing its vertical profile to gain speed and you can see that as soon you can see that as soon as it reaches the 280 knots there it starts climbing so that's it guys that's how you manage the VNAV on this aircraft Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Any questions, please leave it in the comments. Bye bye.